I'm currently at Almad Farms. I don't know if you've ever been here. I'm going to meet with one of the founders and really get to understand the vision and why all of this was built. Well, to be honest, it started as, oh, let's just have a garden where you can come and have a picnic or something. Yeah. Gradually, the ideas kept growing and this is where we are today. This lush green 22 hectare land was once a bare land and in just a few years, it has been transformed to not just an organic farm, but also a destination promoting agro-tourism. Yeah. The farm is divided into four parts. We have the hospitality, we have the restaurants, we have the ranch and the farm aspect of it. Meet Leila, one of the three owners of this farm. She's a serial entrepreneur and an advocate for women entrepreneurs. She's redefining how farming should be done. I keep telling women, if we can give birth, raise the children, take care of the husband, do all this taxes, yeah. I believe we can do more than that. This channel is dedicated to show you some of the best destinations around the continent, but also to showcase entrepreneurs building businesses made here in Africa by Africans. I want to die in a green area. Yeah. <laughs> so this is like a perfect place for, for you. Me. In today's video, we'll be touring Almat Farm located in Abuja, Nigeria. We'll try to understand the idea behind this multi-millionaire farm and the impact it has on Nigeria's economy. We, we plant vegetables that you can only get abroad. I would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and please give this video a like so it gets to the eyes of more people. What were you doing prior to the launch of the farm? Um, I'm an interior designer. I'm, I manufacture furniture. I own a chain of restaurants. I have a, a school, a skill building school, and I'm an author. I wrote two books. What really motivates you? Uh, the fact that they think women can't do a lot. Oh, right. <laughs> Number yeah. one. Number two, I love money. Uh, I love the comfort that comes with money. <laughs> yeah. So how did you guys come up with the funds to really to acquire this piece of land? Well, you know, as I, I mentioned, we're like four of us. Yeah. So and every one of us is doing well in their respective Industry. industries. And then farm lands are usually cheaper than the regular lands you see in, in, mm. a, in Abuja. So yeah. You can get a farm land for, say, 30 million while it's like 10 times the size you buy for 300 and something when if it's a residential yeah. type of land. So, yeah. What are the different aspects of things here so we give some people a holistic idea of really what Ahmad Farm is all about? Well, the difference is very few farms have the organic type of farming, yeah. especially here in Abuja. We plant vegetables that you can only get abroad. And then also we have a petting zoo for children there's a game area for adults. We yeah. have an infinity pool. Only people who know how to swim well <laughs> can go in. <laughs> we have a kayaki. We have horses you can ride. So many different things. This is from 2017 to today. Yeah. We've achieved so much. We've added the pool. We've added more of the greenhouses. We've done the recreational areas. Yeah. We now have a golf course. We have a long tennis field. Yeah. So many other things. It's, this is just in like, Six years. Imagine 25 years. Yeah. You might have flying cars here. <laughs> when was this land? When was it bought? Uh, 2017, I believe. 16, 2017. 17, yeah. How yeah. big is it? I think this is about a 22 acre of land. Yo, that's yeah. big. Yeah. Why did you choose this part of Abuja to do that? You can see how green the place is. Yeah. And the ambience and also it was perfect for what we had, the vision that we had for this place. So we came here and this is the first place that really sat to well with all of us. Mm. This is something that we saw to be what it is today and more. One very interesting thing about the farm is it is not just you guys growing crops here and doing your agricultural business but also people can come in here and immerse themselves you know with this lifestyle which is something that we're not used to especially in this 21st Definitely. century. What was the vision when you and your other colleagues thought about you know building up the farm? Well, to be honest, it started as, oh, let's just have a garden. <laughs> right. We wanted to have this nice little garden where you can come and have a picnic or something. Yeah. But then gradually the ideas kept growing. And oh, then right. people kept uh, advising us to do this, do that. And this is where we are today. If you're going to sell this, say all of you want to exit, you want to sell this, what number are you looking at? Uh, I don't think there's a number on this. We love it. This is a dream for all of us. Yeah. So sometimes you can't put a figure on, on a dream and realizing it as well. It's a continuous investment. We're yeah. still investing. So we wouldn't say we've yielded all that we've put in because we're constantly putting more. Yeah. So many structures are coming up and uh, we've not reached a point where we'll say we're now regaining back our money. Coming from the type of backgrounds that 
I would say a typical northern home. Yeah. You know that it's rare to have even business anywhere close to us. So I, I really can't say there's one particular person that I see that I looked up to to be what I am today because mm -hmm. my father is a civil servant, my mom is a stay-at-home wife and all. So I really didn't like the typical housewife that I grew up seeing. Oh, right. Every single time you wait for your husband to do things for you. And I know that there's so much she would have wanted to do but she didn't have the means to do that. And I started business at 18. I opened a salon at 18. I was in my first year in the university. And after graduating, I came to Abuja for my NYSC. Right from the beginning, all I wanted was to be a carpenter. Mm. But because we don't have conventional schools that you go to like have a degree in carpentry and all, so I had to go through the process. I studied English. And when I got to Abuja, I saw the opportunity to actually have a small showroom and then create some things. After some time, I realized, well, you cannot be that if you don't learn it. So I had to travel to um, study interior design as a diploma. Um, I did space management in Turkey as wow. well. And then I went back to Turkey for a year, eight months to study carpentry so that I could like wow. create furniture that would fit into the type of designs that I want to do. Okay, so we had the... Tomato. Um, tomato starts fruiting after three months. The total lifespan is um, seven months, so harvest for four months. After three months, you can take out uh, about three tons. If you are packaging one, one kg, mm -hmm. right, that's 3,000 packages. Oh, well, that's amazing. Yeah. We have 500 um, stands here, and we're expecting 2,000. When you say 500 stands, like it's one, two, yes. three? Yes. Okay. I'm expecting them um, 2,000 kilograms. The greenhouse size is 192 square meters. So, what would you say bringing more money here in the farm? Is it the agricultural side or the tourism side? Well, both, I would say. Now, they have it, to it be, goes hand it, in there hand. There has to be one that would, that would shoot out. I think it's the agricultural part of it. Oh, wow. Most people that come here come more to, to like get the vegetables. Mm. And then we have to, we send them out. Almost half of the uh, supermarkets in Abuja were the ones supplying them fresh vegetables. So. What do you think people should know about agriculture? I mean, food is a necessity. Mm. So agriculture is food. No matter how the economy goes, yeah, people, people must buy food. Yeah. This is the only business that never goes out of market. Mm. You must sell, no matter how difficult the country is. If you know how to do it right, you know your consumers, you know where to take it. That's it. Just put your money in. That's it. These are like the cold this? room. We use them to transport the vegetables into town for them not to spoil. All right, yeah. two of them. How many of them do you have? We have two actually. Two? Yeah. It's very gigantic. <laughs> Almart is an existing company. We just merged um, partners. This is an existing agri company already. Since 2013? Yes. So to... what does the immediate community really benefit from the fact that uh, they have a farm like this here in their community? Well, they work here. Okay. And almost 75% of our workers are from this community. All right. And then when we came here, we met a settlement of the Fulanese. And if you can see somewhere down there, we moved them to that section, built a better housing for them. Oh, okay. And now they are the security that we have here. Oh, nice. So definitely, we, we brought them water. We made sure they had a school for their kids. And I think you have to give back to whoever you... The community. Definitely. Sorry for interrupting this video, but I want to use just a second and tell you about the sponsors of this video. And if you're a Nigerian in the diaspora and you're looking for a cheap and reliable way to send money to Nigeria and vice versa or pay for fees abroad, then let me tell you about AfriChange, the sponsors of this video. Cross-border remittance can be challenging, but with AfriChange, you can send money both ways across Africa, North America, Europe, and Australia. Users are able to send money from Canada to Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, and so many other other African countries. With their multi-currency wallet to send and receive money, they have one of the best exchange rates in the market with swift transaction processing settlement time. One of the many reasons a lot of people prefer AfriChange is not just for sending money, but also paying fees in over 200 universities in Canada, right here from Nigeria. So to sign up, you can either download their mobile app on your Play Store or your App Store, or visit their website, this is the URL. Uh, all you have to do is put in the amount you want to send, it's going to show you how much your recipients will be receiving, and you know, the money arrives in less than 20 minutes. Thank you AfriChains for sponsoring this video and empowering us to keep traveling and making more videos. Of course guys, go check them out. So these areas, this is these are the like what the the villas yes. or the the bigger ones. These are like the bigger ones. <laughs> this one is two hundred thousand. That's like uh, about one fifty dollars there about. 
So let's see. There's, there's a, a, a dining. At least there's a smart TV. Mm -hmm. So there's two. There are two rooms here. Two rooms. The whole point of you know coming to a place like this is so you experience something you would not experience on yes. a normal day. Do you have how many chalets? I think we have about six chalets and then touch two huts. In as much as we want this to be open to everybody, we, yeah. because of how little the space is, if it's so cheap, it will always be occupied and then it will be spoiled before you you know what before you get here. Yeah, so yeah, that makes it's sense. more of the the experience. If you really want it, you pay for it. If you're if you stay here as a guest, yeah, you can actually walk into the greenhouse, pluck whatever vegetable you want, and make a meal. That oh. is like we love for people to come with their families and do this. Well, how many people do you think would come here? Uh, on a weekend? Yeah. I believe we get about 100 or 150 people come in here almost mm. every week. This is more of like an ancient northern space right. where you can see this type of design. That's the only places you see. So what was the idea? Why did you guys choose to build this? <laughs> There's a place in India called, called the Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal. Yes, so it's a hotel that was built around, I think, the 20s or so. It's so this was sort of... What sort it of like... A, I feel like it's a love place where you can just have, we usually have like a table. People yeah. book this place when you want to do like a romantic thing, a mm. table and then you just, and then there's this dance that women usually do where their clothes go like this. Yeah. It's just for me to dance like Round. this and feel like, oh, I've arrived. <laughs> yeah. This is like a space where you, you can just sit down and just have like a quiet moment, mm -hmm. take a look at stuff. And then when you walk down there, that's a pool. This is the most popular part of part the of, the farm. of Almat Farms, right? Yes. Where you have the Infinity Edge pool. What were you guys thinking about this? This is for people who really know how to swim. Wow. But then we do have the edges where you can stand and take a picture. So many people you see taking a picture here, they don't even swim. Almat is uh, actually um, like a polo club kind of thing, mm -hmm. where they do polo, they play polo. So all these horses are mainly for polo. So when it comes to them going for tournaments, they pack all their horses, go to Kaduna, go to mm. Kano, yeah. go to Lagos to play. Yeah. If you can see on the wall, we have won so many matches because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we have the best polo yeah. players. The all main. Right. Um, purpose is like a ranch where you feed them, you take care of them, and then when it comes to the time for them to play, mm -hmm. you go and play. It is so difficult to maintain them because half of them are not like Nigerian breed. <laughs> so you have to like feed them like they're in Argentina. No, like well, the horses, uh, they're all Argentine. They eat grass. <gasps> no. So you have green grass for them. We do actually, we farm alfalfa grass for the horses. We have alfalfa grass, we have brachiaria grass, and also we have digitaria grass. This is the the stables. Oh, how much is the horse? The Argentine horses are really expensive. Some can get to almost fifty thousand dollars or more. Fifty thousand dollars for a horse. They win a lot of money for us. There, yeah. There's value in it. Well, Polo is actually the main purpose of for having the horses. horses. Yeah. To so you know the real worth of this farm, she has already confessed <laughs> to us that an average here you're looking at like what thirty thousand dollars. So yes. you can count one, two, three for all of them. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so what what breed of uh, what breed is this? Present cows. cows. Did they breed them here in Nigeria? They're from the Netherlands. Oh right, all the <laughs> These way. These are foreign. How how do you bring them from the? Hey, hey, hey bro. <laughs> the hey, hey, bro. <laughs> bro is going through that side. They ship them in now. They ship Just them like in every other from the plane. Now. Definitely. And the reason is because of the milk. Oh right. So they have more milk. And, uh, but when you bring them for. in, can't you make them produce so that it, it you has? Can. That's why we have the male and the female. We just had a baby. Yeah. Mm. So they would reproduce. Like that big one, how much is it? Hey, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Anybody that kills this cow, there would be serious problems. Because you have to pay flight tickets. <laughs> when I started, success is thriving to get money. But at this point, success for me is how many people we take out of the labor market. I have about 371 people right now. So it's really that makes me feel successful. Like I am a Nigerian that is taking care of 371. It's beyond what I've ever imagined. I thought 
till I die I might just have 10 people. In as much as I just see 371 people, it's almost a thousand because everyone has a family and this money they're getting from us is the same that goes to feed Yo. their families. Um, I'm not married, I don't have any biological children. I'm not a man and if I can achieve all these things, there's nothing that can stop another woman from. And to be honest, I'm not from like a, a rich home. I, I wasn't born with a silver spoon. I worked myself to this point. Many women think, oh, if you don't have the, the funds, how do you do it? So just have the passion and keep pushing and then keep trying to do the right things. Set yourself up to, to have the right opportunities. Yeah. If you want to be a carpenter, learn to be a carpenter. Just don't say it in your mouth or dream about it. If you want to be a businesswoman, start a business no matter how small it is and keep pushing. It takes years. This is me. This is a success story From of each almost each 20 each. years ago. Yeah. So it's, it's a long process. It's not something that just happens today. And we're still not there yet. It's not like I'm, I've arrived. I'm still working every single day to see that things are done right and we learn by the day. So anybody that tells you you can't do it is just telling you what they think about themselves, not you. Because everything that I was told I can't do, I did it, I overdid it. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. That, that totally makes sense. Thank you guys for watching this video to the very end. I hope um, it was inspiring to watch her story. I hope it was interesting starting from 18 years old, built her first business up until what, 35 or 36, there about. I'm 38 now. <laughs> 38 now. <laughs> yes. Um, like building a farm, she owns, like she's, she's an interior designer, she owns a, a chain of restaurants. Restaurant. That's her, uh, and she's an author. I also heard that you're a philanthropist. Yes. We need funding. <laughs> <laughs> is this, and this is a charity, <laughs> this is luxury. <laughs> Um, and all of these good things, yeah. so uh, you should, I, I'm going to link, maybe I'll get links if people can buy your books or whatever Definitely. down below. Until the next video, which I don't know where it's going to be, <laughs> right? Uh, I'll see you guys soon. Peace. <laughs>